Okay, so the paint came in the mail the other day, which was a lot quicker than I actually expected. And um, so what I, I'm almost ready to start applying the paint. I've got a few seams to fill in and smooth out. Uh, I've got a few, uh, a few panel lines to go over and uh, make a little bit deeper, which I do want to talk about panel lines a little more detail uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and also, one other thing I haven't really talked about at all yet is the wings. Uh, it's because the wings are pretty much straightforward. There's only, you know, each wing has about five pieces. They just get glued together and painted. So there's nothing really, uh, nothing too special about the wings. Um, and they're in the process of being glued up now. So um, let me just uh, remind you what the paint scheme looks like. So typically with anything you do, there's several ways to get the end result. And I've been thinking about this uh, paint scheme for quite a while and trying to think of the best way that I want to mask it out and do it. So the easiest way, if I just do my best to show you here, I, I never claim to be an artist, so bear with me here. But just to kind of give you guys an idea of my thought process here, uh, if we look at a side view, not a side view, but like an edge view profile of the uh, of the model and the, and the paint layers that, going to, that are going to go on it. So let's just say this is the edge of the fuselage. So as you saw from the previous picture, uh, it, pretty much, it pretty much goes, you know, from top to bottom, it's white, black, yellow, blue, yellow, black, white. So the easiest way to do it, if this is the plastic of the fuselage, the easiest way would be to spray on a layer of white, the whole thing, just paint the whole thing in white. And so all of this would be white. And then mask off and paint everything black. And then mask off and paint everything yellow. And then mask off and then paint the center section blue. So that would be white and then black, yellow, then blue. And I know I'm greatly exaggerating here. There's no way that that's to scale as far as paint thickness goes. I'm just kind of doing this to, you know, give you an idea. A couple of reasons why I don't want to go this route is because in the middle you've got four layers of paint. And as I said, I know that four layers of paint really isn't that thick and it would probably be okay. But I just don't want four layers of paint built up on it because plus over the top of the whole thing I'm going to put a, uh, a semi-gloss clear. Because the paint I'm going to put, be putting down is a gloss and I don't want the whole aircraft to be gloss. I want it to be more of a semi-gloss. Um, but also, remember this layer here is black. I don't know how well the yellow is going to fully cover the black. And uh, that might take several coats of the yellow to fully cover the black. And then with the blue going over top of the yellow, again, I'd have to do some experimenting, but I don't know how many layers of the blue it would take to cover the yellow so it looked more blue and less green. And I don't know if that's even a concern. You know, I don't know if that's a legit concern or not without experimenting with it a bit. But regardless, this is not the way I want to do it. Ideally, the best way to do it, again, let's say this is the fuselage, the best way to do it would be to mask off the white only where they're supposed to be white, and then mask off the black only where they're supposed to be black, and then the yellow, and then the blue. That way it's all one layer, it's all even, one layer of paint, and again, it would be white, then black, then yellow, then blue, yellow, black, white. This would be the best way to do it. However, this is probably the more difficult way to do it because masking off the edges, once I paint the white, masking off that edge, say that's masking tape, to get the black perfectly on that edge, the entire length, it's very tedious and tricky and not easy. And if you mess up just a little bit, Let's say, um, let's say I did the white, and then I put the masking tape on, and I just got over that edge a tiny bit, and then the black went on. You would see a little sliver of the gray plastic underneath. So, you know, this way is possible. People do it like this all the time. It's just that I would have to mask off several lines on both sides, left and right hand side of the model, plus on the tips of the wings, and that would just be very, very tedious and time consuming. 
and I'm not completely against trying this but what I think I want to do is is kind of a I think I want to do a, um, a combination of these two so for example I think at the moment this is the way I'm going to go about doing it now this could change as soon as I start putting the tape down I don't know but what I want to do here what I want to try to do is paint the white where the white goes, but I'll end the white about where the yellow stripe would be. So let's say the black stripe is supposed to be here and the yellow stripe would be here. I'll cut it about halfway where the yellow stripe is supposed to be. And then I'll mask that off and then do the blue right here. So I've layer of white, blue, then white. All right, so far so good. Then I'll mask off for the yellow. So the yellow stripe will go here. And that yellow, where I mask this off, this end off, will be about halfway where the black goes. So then when I mask off for the black, so let's say the black would go, say here, I'll mask that off and I'll kind of sand to kind of smooth that edge out a little bit before I put the black down. And then the black, the black would be like so. I mean, I know technically the black would be like that, but you know, it, it's I, again. I know the paint thickness is super thin, so you wouldn't even you wouldn't see that uh, that discrepancy there. You wouldn't even really see that that step on the edge there. So this way, you know, at the most I'll have two paint layers instead of four. Right here, yeah, it looks like three, but remember that's going to be kind of cut down, so it's one one tapered into another. So like maybe two and a half, possibly. I don't know. So anyways, this is my plan so far. Is um, Again, I'll do the white and the blue, and then the yellow, and then the black over top of that. So we'll see how that works. Um, now, I am using enamel, and there's some pros and cons with enamel. And one reason I, why I like enamel paints is because, in my experience, it's, uh, and I usually, I typically use Model Masters, uh, Model Masters enamel. In my experience, this tends to kind of stick to the plastic pretty well. You don't really need a primer. Uh, it tends to kind of buy it in and stick to the plastic. Uh, I typically do sand the uh, plastic first lightly with say maybe like 800 grit or finer just to help it bite in a little bit more. Um, the problem with enamel though, the only thing I don't like about enamel is it takes forever to dry. And I mean it could be dry to the touch in a few hours but I have ruined a paint job in the past because I handled it the next day and I still left a fingerprint in it. So it really needs several days to fully set up and cure. So plan is, is when I do the white, uh, when I put the white down, I will let it set for probably two or three days, maybe four, and then I'll mask off and do the blue. And then I'll let that set for another four or five days, and then the yellow and let that set for several days and then the black and I'll just let that set for well over a week before I really handle it or touch it anymore. Um, there's only going to be a few decals that are going to go on this. There's a little paint scheme that goes on the tail so I'll just mask and paint that off after it's fully cured because to mask that off and apply decals I'm going to have to handle the model quite a bit. So I want to make sure the paint is fully cured for several days before I really handle it. So because of that, it's going to be a long time in between videos. I'm really hoping that by the time I publish this video, I have two colors on the white and the blue. That, that's my plan. Again, plans change. And while I'm waiting for that to cure in between colors, then I'll be working on that poacher model. I, I've kind of taken too long of a break on that poacher Mercedes that I'm building for my friend. Um, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and look at my videos and watch the ones about the uh, poacher um, it's a poacher uh, Mercedes Cabriolet that I'm working on. So uh, I need to get back on that. Um, it's setting literally like right there on the bench. It's just out of view. So uh, I need to get back to work on that. But 
for one thing, I'm waiting for my friend to supply me some leather. But that's not really a good excuse because I've got tires to build and I've got a few other things that I could be doing. I'm just, I've just put it off. So anyways, um, let me get, uh, let me get it masked off for the first color and uh, we'll get back with you when I have some progress to show you. Oh, before I go, I did say I wanted to talk about panel lines. I know I've been rambling and talking, but something that's been on my mind for quite a while. The panel lines on the airplane. Let me get the, uh, let me get the aircraft back over here. When you look at the panel lines, this has really nice recessed panel lines. I don't know how well you can see them, but it has really nice recessed panel lines, and I have been going over them i know some people have like um like panel line scribers panel line engravers if you're careful enough you can use the back edge of a sharp uh exacto knife blade again like i said use the back edge and just very very gently very gently run it into the panel line you're not really pressing down you're just kind of letting the weight of it follow the panel line do that a few times to kind of define the panel line then you can press just a little bit lightly, dragging that panel line back. If you try to press too hard too soon, it could very easily veer out of the panel line and put a nice scratch right in your model, and you don't want to do that. So uh, just very carefully scribing some of these panel lines in a little bit deeper. And I don't even know yet if I'm going to do all of them or not. Now here's my thing with panel lines. I've seen several models that people have built, and I'm talking like from magazines back when I was a kid reading Fine Scale Modeler to recently seeing uh, pictures online of models people have built. And after they paint the model, they go over the whole thing with a panel line accent color, panel line wash. And when you first look at it to the casual, casual observer, I promise I do know how to speak, I just, yeah, you know. Um, they look at it and they're, they're like, the first thing is like, look how realistic that looks that's amazing look at all that detail look at those panel lines look at those rivets it actually has recessed rivets on here and at first glance to the untrained eye it's like yeah that looks really realistic but if you really think about it it's not realistic at all um you know for one rivet heads aren't they're not typically black and panel lines really aren't that noticeable for example if you went to an actual airplane, a real airplane, sitting on the ramp, and you backed away from it far enough to where it was far enough away from you that it looked to be this big, okay? You're far enough away back, it looks to be this big. I guarantee you, you're not going to see any rivets. And you probably won't really see very many panel lines. Maybe some of the bigger ones, but you're just not going to see that much detail. So... There's kind of two schools of thought here. Do you, do you make it realistic by not heavily accenting the panel lines? Or do you make it look realistic by darkening all the panel lines, but it's actually not really realistic? Does that make any sense? Now, if I was building this for myself, I would do it to, way, to the way I thought it looked good. And if you're building a model for yourself, and if you like the look of dark panel lines and dark rivet details, and by all means go for it, because it does look really impressive. It does make a model look really impressive. But technically, it's not really realistic. And um, so I think what I may do with this one is uh, I may just see what it looks like after it's painted and just kind of see how visible the panel lines are. That's why I am deepening them a little bit, just to define them a little bit more. But I guarantee you I am not going to go over all of them with this black panel line accent, because that would just make them way too dark. If I accent them at all, what I will do is for the white, I will take some white paint, put a little bit of gray in it just to make it just a hint darker, and go over the panel lines with that. Anywhere that's blue, I'll do the same thing. I'll take the blue, and I'll darken it just a little bit, and I'll go over the panel lines there. And same with the yellow, if there's even anything in there to see. And again, it's just to kind of bring them out a tiny bit. But like I said, probably, I probably won't even accent them at all. Because that would technically be most realistic. 
Now I will accent some of, like for example, the gear doors. Accenting the gear doors and there's a few little scoops and vents and louvers and things like that. I will accent those because those would be quite a bit noticeable on the real aircraft. So some of those I will accent, um, but as far as all the panel lines, I probably won't touch them. And as far as the rivets go, definitely I'm not gonna touch them. I think just seeing the recessed details through the paint would be perfectly good enough, which again is the main reason why, or one of the main reasons why I'm not gonna go with this. Because by the time I get all that paint on it, you may not see any panel lines at all. Again, this would be ideal, but way too time consuming. Um, I'm going to go with this. Now, when I mask off here, say for example, when I'm ready for the yellow, let me just redraw this a little bit here. So again, I put the white down and the blue and then the white. When I mask off for the yellow, so that's masking tape right here, I'm going to sand down like that a little bit. Sorry, that's not quite out in the view very well. Okay, I'm going to sand down like that a little bit. That'll thin up the paint here and, um, and it'll leave less of a step like here, I think. Um, but um, that's, and again, I know it's greatly exaggerated. Um, and one other thing about painting, it's really easy if you're not careful for that paint to bleed under the tape. So then when you peel the tape off, so let's look at a, uh, let's look at this view right here. So let's say this is uh, blue and I do the yellow. Let's say that's yellow. It's really easy for that to kind of bleed under and you get little things like that. Right? I'm sure a lot of you have had that problem, have seen that. One way that I prevent that is when I put the tape down by lightly sanding in here with like you know, finer than 800 grit. Um, that helps burnish those edges down. You gotta make sure those edges of the tape are stuck down perfectly well. And also when you start applying that color, you go really light like a mist, like a mist coat. That mist coating will kinda just stick here and kinda fill in or seal up any gaps that are there. If you put it on really thick and heavy and wet, the first coat, it's gonna run and bleed under the tape which will give you issues like that. So the first coat and the second coat, just kind of a light misting and let that kind of set a little bit and then finally can go over until it's a good, a good, nice, uh, a good nice coat. Another way to avoid that is to make the first coat the same color as the base coat, which I can't do here because this side is blue and this side is white. So I can't do that. But you could do a clear coat. You could do your first layer as a clear coat and then your color coat. Because if any clear bleeds under, you're not gonna see it. So there's just a few little tips and tricks there for you if that helps you out a lot. Typically what I do is I just put a really light first and second coat so it won't bleed under, and then I'll put a couple of heavier coats. All right, now, if any of you out there are professional model makers with more experience than myself, because like I said, I don't typically do military aircraft. My typical models I build are civilian cars, motorcycles, civilian aircraft, stuff that does not have a lot of paint striping or a lot of details, uh, definitely stuff that does not have panel lines. If you see something that I'm planning on doing here that is definitely wrong, or there's a way that is definitely much better that I'm just overlooking, please feel free to put it in the comments. If I don't like your idea, I'll tell you I don't like the idea and I'll tell you why I don't like it. But if it's a legitimate, better idea than what I have here, yeah, I'll try it. So um, I, welcome any, I welcome any comments. So this video is getting way too long. Um, but uh, like I said, when I, when I come back to you, uh, hopefully I'll have uh, maybe just a little bit of some, um, um, a picture of uh, masking off and then the colors that are on it. And probably the next video will be putting the other colors on it, the other stripes, the yellow and the black. So. Anyways, let me uh, let me get some work done here, and I'll show you I'll show you what it looks like next. Okay, I know I said earlier that, uh, and I think I said something like I know for a fact I will not use a panel line wash on all the panel lines. Well, I kind of also said plans change. 
However, I did say I was not going to put the panel line wash over top of the entire paint. What I did was I went ahead and put it on before any paint at all. So I went through, uh, this is one of the side cowling pieces. So I went through everything with that panel line wash. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is go over the whole thing with uh, white primer. And that'll kind of cover that a little bit. The goal is, the plan is to make the panel lines um, kind of show but not completely disappear. So once the color goes over this, uh, once the color goes on, they're not going to be nearly that dark. So the goal isn't to make them dark, the goal is to make them not disappear when I put the color on. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me show you the, um, I got one of the wings done with the primer on. Okay, so here's the uh, left wing, I think it is, yeah, left wing. And that's with the panel line wash applied and just uh, one coat, one light coat of the white primer. So I think it's looking okay. I think once I get the um, the other colors on, now most of this will be blue. From like here all of that will be blue, that tip here will be white, and then there will be a yellow and black stripe here. So I think um, that may show pretty well. Um, we'll see what it looks like when we get some color on it. So I'll go ahead and do the rest, you know, I'll do the other wing like that. I'll do the, um, you know, horizontal stab stabilizer and the rest of the fuselage and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So, so far I think this is going to turn out okay. So again, this is a picture of the actual aircraft. And you'll notice, you know, when you look at the photo of the real airplane, you can't really see any panel lines, rivet details. So again, that's why I'm not too concerned about actually highlighting them uh, on the model. Um, now blue for me is a hard color to match. Well, any color for me is a hard color to match, but blue is probably the worst. So I did a few different samples of some different blues that I had. I think those are just way off. Uh, but this one, this one actually, I think came out pretty well. Um, so I, uh, I, did the, uh, I did the wings and the horizontal stabilizer. Try to get a good view of that. There we go. Out of the shadow. Um, now I still need to mask off and do the yellow and the black stripes, um, but I emailed a picture of this to uh, to the guy I'm building it for, so he could see the shade of blue that I'm using to see if he thinks it's close enough, and also to ask him what he thinks about the panel lines. Um, you know, I told him that having the panel lines in rivet detail is a personal preference, and some people like them and some people don't. So I'm waiting for him to let me know if the blue is okay and if he wants the panel lines there or if he just wants me to completely fill them in. He, he may not like the look of having the panel lines and rivets visible. So uh, if he wants me to, I'll, I'll just fill them in. You know, I'd, I want to know now before I paint the whole fuselage. So since this video is now getting to be way too long, um, I'm going to end this one here. So again, I'm waiting to find out what he wants me to do with it, so I'm going to end this one here. So next video will be focusing on getting the canopy parts put on and getting all the color on the rest of the model. So that'll be, you know, that'll be the, the rest of it. I mean, as far as building goes, building is probably 98% done. Um, so uh, that's where I'm going to leave this one. So don't know when that next one will come out. Um, hopefully next week, but uh, I may put a uh, I may put a poacher video out next week of that Mercedes I'm working on. It's been too long since I've done one for that. So, anyways, it'll come out when it comes out. So, as always, thanks for watching.